Uh, just a quick, uh, give some credit to Sauce Labs. They're wonderful people, and they contribute a lot to Appium, too. I could not have done this by myself, so yay, Sauce. And they're a sponsor, yeah. There we go. Um, all right. So I'm here to do an advanced Appium talk, and I'm staring at a black sea. The lights are in my eyes. But I'll assume there are people there, or you didn't leave when the lights went up. Um, so anyways, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Cuellar. Uh, I have a Twitter handle. Please follow me. Um, I don't tweet a lot, but I feel at some point in my life, having a lot of Twitter followers will be useful. So at some point, I'll have a grudge or a score to settle, and I would like a large amount of followers to sort of pressure people into something. I don't know what yet, but it'll happen, so please follow me. Um, I am the creator of Appium. Uh, I currently am the head, or not head, I'm principal development manager at Foodit. Uh, before then, I managed the QA organization at Shazam and at a dating site called Zeusk. Before then, I was at Microsoft working on products you may know and love, like Excel and Outlook. And way back in the day, I got a computer science degree from a school called Carnegie Mellon. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. And also, thank God I'm here this time. I was supposed to be at the last Selenium conference, so I have a lesson to teach all of you, you Americans in the audience, and it seems like there are quite a few of you. We're going to run a test later. Um, but you'll notice on your passport, there's a subtle difference between these two pages of the passport. Does anyone know what they, they are? Because it's quite important, as I found out, when I tried to go to Selenium conference six months ago. Um, the one on the left has the word visas written right next to that Australian stamp. And the one on the right has this thing called endorsements written on the side. And apparently, that actually matters. So don't try and get the last three stages of your passport stamped. They won't do it. Um, so anyways, I had a nice round trip to Dubai, but I did not get to go to India. But I'm here this time because I live here, and I don't need a passport to be where I live. So anyways, moral of the story. Uh, I point that out. Test everything. Uh, and in the spirit of that, and we'll come back to this, I'm going to run a test real quick. I need a volunteer from the audience. Anybody? OK, you're volunteering. Good. I think you're American, right? Yeah. OK, you should be able to read this then. Wonderful. So is there a microphone for this lady? Uh, so please read the sentence I have written. Every fiber of my being takes offense at your maneuvers to analyze, prioritize, and catalog my favorite colors in the center of this theater. The stenographer is American. Look at it. That's not how you spell fiber. <laughs> she gave up, too. But she spelled one word, so I was able to determine that. Anyways, I'm just having some fun killing some time. But anyways, I'm actually here to talk about um, a bunch of things. So first, a brief overview of what Appium is for those of you who've had your head in the sand and don't know. Uh, what's new in 1.6? I'm going to talk about automating Windows and Mac apps with Appium, which is now a reality as of a few weeks ago. Well, Mac apps as of this week, uh, Windows apps as of a few weeks ago. Uh, then we'll talk about some advanced Appium techniques. Uh, there'll be a grab bag of fun things that I just like to share with people. Uh, and then there'll be an AMA at the end, because I like taking questions from people I don't know on camera, recorded, being cataloged by a sonographer. Um, anyway, so Appium. Appium uh, was actually born right here in London, so to speak. I mean, I didn't code it, the, what became Appium here in London. but. As Marcus mentioned, there was a talk that was laughed out of the building that I did here uh, about Appium, or what is now called Appium. Um, so the story goes, I had an iOS automation tool. I gave a different talk here on more like the page object model, but I was showing you know, iOS and web page objects being shared uh, across the same test. So reuse your test code, write two page objects, test both platforms, that kind of thing. And no one really cared about what I was talking about. They just wanted to know how the hell I was automating that iPhone. Uh, and so that was the Appium talk, and now I'm here many years later, actually not giving a lightning talk, but a full talk. Uh, so it all started here, right here. So maybe other things will start here. I haven't seen anything yet that's new and controversial. No one's been laughed out just yet, but the conference is young. We still have a day and a half for that to happen. So whoever that is, be encouraged. It might turn out well. It likely won't. We, we may be laughing. We are experts. We may be laughing because your idea is junk, but. It could, be, it could go well for you. Um, anyways, what is Appium? So for those of you who have their head in the sand, Appium is an implementation of the JSON wire protocol that controls native and hybrid iOS and Android applications. And that's a lie, because it also controls Windows and Mac applications. But I forgot to update this slide. Um, it's also the most popular open source mobile functional testing framework. I stole that line from someone, but I think it sort of narrows it down enough to where it's technically true. Um, we're kind of popular, but anyways, you have to qualify it a bit. 
Uh, how does it work? It's just Selenium. You send JSON wire commands over the wire. Um, we receive them. We translate it to the best automation protocol that we know of for the application you want to automate. And then we reply back to you with a JSON wire web driver protocol compliant response, and you have a test. So it's just like Selenium. It's just a different server you boot. And we control mobile apps and web apps on, the, on mobile browsers and desktop applications and TV applications under one platform as well. Um, so we have a simple philosophy. Uh, we strive to use standard and sanctioned APIs and techniques. Um, we don't, for the most part, like 98% of the time this is true. This is like a little flexibility on this. There's just some very tempting low-hanging fruit that needs things that are a little bit you know, sort of dicey. But for the most part, that's true. Um, you can code in any language you choose. So Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, Objective-C, Node.js, Perl, anything there's a Selenium binding in for, you can use that exact same code to control Appium, which is wonderful. Uh, we don't modify the application under test, so don't worry. You're not going to have to import a big SDK into your debug build. You can just use your app off the shelf, provided, you know, in the case of iOS, that you have the source code for it. <laughs> uh, anyways, and lastly, Keep it, we always want to be free and open source, just like Selenium. I think Simon sort of talked about earlier how people might offer us a bounty to fix things. Ah, I do this for joy and fun. I don't get paid for it. If Appium blows up one day because it sucks, my children won't go hungry. It's not my primary source of income. It's not really a viable source of income. There's not a lot of money in free software, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> well, but don't let that discourage you. Please contribute. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, so here's where we are right now. We have 4,000 stars on GitHub. I think Selenium actually passed us. For a while, we were ahead of Selenium, but then people found out it had moved to GitHub. So unfortunately, I can't you know, rub that in Simon's face right now, but I would if I could. Um, we have about 2,000 forks on GitHub, which I think does trump Selenium, so suck that. Um, <laughs> 200 contributors and 5,000 commits, uh, which also might be bigger than Selenium, but who's counting? Um, Anyways, we had 150,000 downloads of our 1.0, which is about two years ago, and we've closed 4,000 issues, which is a bit of a two-edged sword. Uh, one, that we had 4,000 issues that needed closing, but two, hey, we fixed them, so pat on the back. Um, anyways, so let's start with what's new. So I am the middle Appium talk at this conference, so lo and behold, what was laughed at four years ago now has three talks in one conference. Uh, yesterday, you may have heard from Justin at his workshop. He's right there. Uh, he was the ghost of Christmas past. He was telling you about all the things Appium does, how to get started. I am more of the Christmas present here in this Christmas carol themed sort of arrangement. And then Jonathan Lips tomorrow is going to take you app to the future, I believe is the name of his talk, or Star Driver. It's something very futuristic sounding. Uh, normally I do the talk that has very abstract ideas and no practical information, but Jonathan and I are switching roles today and I'm actually going to inform you about things. I've seen his slides. There is nothing in there yet that is concrete and it relates to computers. It's all currently like pictures of sci-fi movies and two words on a slide. So he promised me by tomorrow that will change, but if it doesn't, whatever. I've done the talk with the information so Jonathan can have some fun this time. I usually steal all the fun. Um, so anyways, here's what's new. Microsoft has contributed Windows support. So Windows 10 applications now run on Appium. You can use the Selenium WebDriver protocol to control Windows applications. So just a quick, oh sorry, it's the slides later. Um, uh, also, we have a brand new iOS implementation that uses the new XC UI test framework. We used to use a framework called UI Automation JS. Apple secretly deprecated it and then actually deprecated it with the last release. Uh, but no worries, if your test is written in Appium, it will run on new phones. So if you're using iOS 9.3 or, or higher, you will be using the XCUI test implementation. If you are on iOS 9.2.3 or whatever the last one there was or lower, you will use the UI automation JavaScript implementation. And to you, it makes no difference. You send Selenium commands, we handle that for you. Appium is a middleware layer that finds the best automation technology for what you're trying to do and uses it, and you can control it via Selenium. So no worries. Had you written your tests in JavaScript, you would now be forced to write them in Swift and you'd have to rewrite all of your tests. But if you used Apple's, if you didn't use the Apple tool, you don't have to rewrite anything. So anyways, who, who thinks vendors know best? Um, UI Automator 2 based Android support beta is in there. So we've upgraded to a newer Android automation framework. 
So you now have three options in Appium, or three, yes. There's a Solendroid-based implementation, there is a UI Automator-based implementation, and there's UI Automator 2. So for really ancient Android devices, you can use Solendroid. For ones that are just moderately old, you can use UI Automator, and then UI Automator 2 now going forward for newer ones. And like I said, it's all the Appium protocol. You don't have to worry about which one you're using. We sort that out for you. Uh, and lastly, the Appium is now part of this JS.foundation thing, and I think that'll be in Jonathan's talk, but it doesn't interest me. I'm a developer. But it's probably important to someone, so woohoo. Um, coming soon, I've seen work start on new GUIs, so I wrote the two existing GUIs for Appium, and they've been maintained by me and various other people since. Maintained infrequently, I should say. Uh, so they work for Android quite well, but for iOS, they may, they're a bit outdated and may not function correctly, but we're building a brand new electron-based universal um, GUI, uh, which I don't know when it will be done. I won't put the Jonathan who's working on any kind of timeline, but soon this should be available to you in the not too distant future. I'll pull a Simon and I'll say it'll be out by summer. No year given. Um, so anyways, I have no idea when it actually be out, so don't quote me on that. Um, better docs and onboarding material are coming. Uh, Justin has a really cool workshop yesterday that I think is out there on the internet. Is it? Uh, kind, of. kind of. Well, I'll see if I can twist his arm into getting it all out there. But that might be a very good start for new onboarding material. And then, like I said, I will plug Jonathan's talk once again. So if you want to see Jonathan try and do my talk as you watch me struggle through the kind of talk Jonathan normally does, uh, he has a talk called Star Driver, which is tomorrow, I think, around noon or so. So go check that out. That is the ghost of Christmas future of the Appium Talks, where he will talk about the future of Appium and all the cool things coming, and he will dream big dreams. And you will laugh at him, and they will probably come true, because um, they will sound crazy. Um, so anyways, like I said, hell has frozen over. Microsoft has written not only an Edge Driver implementation, but a Windows 10 implementation. Can we get a round of applause for that? There we go. No one's happy to see me, but everyone's happy to see Microsoft cave in to pressure. I like it. Um, so anyways, check it out. It's right there. And apparently, it actually works, um, unlike the Edge driver. So, <laughs> so you can check that out. And there's some people working on it. And they're very responsive, and they're part of the Appium community. So if you write a Windows desktop app, which if you're at a web development conference, I don't know why you would do that. But who knows? You might. Check it out. Cool stuff there. And then this is fresh off the press. Well, not this, sorry. Another note, if you don't want to use the one written by the people at the Death Star, there is an alternate implementation written by some Siberians I met. Um, it's called Winium. Uh, it was available about a year and a half, two years ago. And it automates uh, pre-Windows 10 and Windows Mobile and Windows Phone apps. So they have three different drivers. Pretty cool stuff. So I don't know how to pronounce their company name. I think it's in Russian. but. That is the link to that. Please go check that out. It's really cool, and it works. And I will show you a quick demo if you don't believe me. I probably don't need to show this, but I will. All right, uh, so we'll just watch a quick video. And it is, where's the play button? There it is. Let's just fast forward to the good part. You look, it's Selenium code up there, but it's about to control <coughs> Windows, which is pretty neat. That's a Windows phone. This is the stuff from the Winium people. I haven't had time to do a Microsoft version demo for you guys. Uh, but cool, if you're a fan of Windows Mobile, now you can automate your app. So I think it's going to open the uh, Contact Manager app eventually. <laughs> there we go. And it's probably going to type in an address or something. It's Selenium. And you're using WebDriver, and that's a Windows phone. So really, really cool. Uh, and we always, I guess when we started with Appium, the slogan was automation for apps. And I think we literally meant it without knowing it, because that's an app, and we're automating it. Uh, and then also, I will show you a Windows app. And we'll fast forward to the good part again. Uh, so yeah. Once again, WebDriver code, you can see calc.exe is the app in our capabilities. And you're going to see the Windows Calculator app be controlled by Selenium. Uh, this is the Russian implementation. Uh, the Microsoft one works just as well. I just don't have a video for it. Um, so anyways, 
Everything's coming up WebDriver lately. Um, and now, moving back here, Mac apps are available. Please check out that repo, Appium for Mac. I wrote this repo maybe three years ago as sort of a proof of concept of how to do it. And then some people at Intuit um, took it and then based their whole automation on it for several products without telling me. Uh, and then I got an email like a month ago from them and said, oh, we'd like to open source all the fixes we've made to your thing. We have like four years worth of fixes to this. And so they recently pushed it, like last week. Um, it's in a separate branch. It hasn't been merged forward. But if you check out the only other branch in that repo, you will get the updated working better Intuit version of Mac apps. So also, how about a round of applause for Intuit for open sourcing something? <laughs> I believe the guy's name is, uh, it's either Russell Stewart or Stuart Russell. I can't, it's one or the other. But cool guy, came to me, open sourced all this stuff. And he even has more stuff that we may get to be open sourced eventually, but there's a bit of a, there's a thing we have to sort out first. <laughs> Um, but thanks to the people, I think Intuit makes Quicken and QuickBooks and a few other like tax software in the US. So they're a fairly large, well-respected company and they've been automating their Mac app with Appium for Mac for quite some time now and liking it. Um, and then they finally decided to tell everyone. So it's all available for you to steal now. Um, oh, and I have a demo of that too, I forgot. Uh, yeah, so this is the calculator app with Appium for Mac. That's all it is. It's a very quick demo. You might have missed it. I'll do it again. <laughs> so that source code's in the repo if you want to play around with it. But yeah, WebDriver, Mac, done. Uh. <laughs> so anyways, now we're here to actually talk about what most of you came about. Most of you didn't know Appium did all this stuff, but this is the stuff Appium does do. We're here to talk advanced Appium. And I love that four years later, I can finally do a conference talk that isn't, this is what WebDriver is. These are capabilities. You pass them in. I have a crowd that actually knows all of this. And I can skip all of that boring stuff and just take you on a tour of the advanced features of Appium. So for those of you who question me repeatedly, does Appium do multiple devices? I will embarrass Jonathan Lips to show you that in fact it does. So this is a video from a couple years ago of Jonathan and his Appium band. So I might need to turn this down a yeah, bit. Yeah, you can turn off the. I don't know if Jonathan's the, here. Is uh, he around to be embarrassed by this? <laughs> so he has four Android simulators, two are playing the keyboard, two are playing the drums, and then he has an iPhone giving him the lyrics. Check. And this is one Appium uh, script controlling five different devices. So I would just like to put this to rest. Appium does support multiple servers, and Jonathan can sing and write songs. Uh, I'll plug his website. He probably has music on the web. Do you, Jonathan? Yeah, listen to his band. They're probably awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but now to hear. <laughs> but not to be outdone, Jonah, formerly of Sauce Labs, created what's called the Appium Jukebox, which is a uh, it's a MIDI player that sends each instrument to an additional device hooked up with Appium. So if you have a 16-channel MIDI file, Jonah will decode it for you. And each phone here is running a particular instrument. I think this is Eye of the Tiger. I'm having trouble hearing it. So anyway, this is 16 running on one Appium. I think they are Legos. Uh, anyways, so multiple servers are supported. Don't ever ask us that question again. <laughs> if we get that on the message board, I'm going to be angry. Um, anyway, cool. Find by image is another unique advanced capability of Appium. Here is a tutorial on how to do it. I am running low on time, so I'm not going to demo this, because I think I only have like seven minutes. So I'm running low according to my clock. Is that right? Anyway. OK. Cool. And of course, it wouldn't be one of my advanced Appium talks without showing you the robot that uses Appium. He is also <laughs> OK, let's turn the volume off. So anyways, we've written integration for Appium that will control a tapster. Unfortunately, with the latest iOS SDK upgrades, it is not yet implemented in the XEUI test version of Appium, so you need to use Appium 1.4 or lower to do this at the moment. But it's not a lot of work to just add the little you know, page of code to make this work. But anyways, as you saw, a robot just automated the Twitter website with, a, uh, with Appium. And so you may be wondering, how does that work? And I might remember, and I might not, but I'll sort of generalize it, because it was a long time ago. So we have a, a sample app we put under Appium that just tells you what you're touching on the screen. 
Uh, we lower the robot's finger until he touches the screen. Our app then displays the coordinates, which we read with Appium, because it's just a web element in an app. And then we touch it in two other places. Some fancy math happens with matrices. I'll show you some shots. There's a math porn for you guys. A few people enjoying that, good. Um, but basically what you can do is you can build a translation matrix so you can convert points in one coordinate system to another. And by that I mean the robot knows how to move in the physical world. If we can tell it how to map those movements to the screen of the phone in the app world, then we can take every single touch command in Appium and we can run it on an actual device by just telling the robot to perform the touch actions. So anyways, Jason's giving a whole other talk on the robot revolution. That is also, t I think that's today. Um, come see that at four. Cool stuff. Other stuff, WebDriver Agent is a backend written by Facebook. It supports multiple IO simulators and some other cool things. Check out that project. This is a very quick survey, I'm sorry. There's a lot of links. The slides will be online. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we have an XCUI test implementation available as well. Um, so there are some perks to using WebDriver Agent, but you'll have to go to the website and dig more into it as I'm running low on time. Um, this is a cool thing I learned from some Portuguese people I met. So another common thing I get on Appium is how do I automate SMS messages? And this is a really cool trick. All you have to do is um, turn on your settings on your iPhone to display SMS as alerts, and then they'll just show up as regular alerts, which you can already automate with Appium. So ah, go back. I'll just show you the video of that real quick. So you just go into settings and iOS and you go to your notifications, you find your messages app or whatever using WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, you can do any of them. Set the style to alert, and then the alert will show up in your application, and it's automatable. Pretty neat if you need to do that. Uh, another interesting quirk of the iOS simulator is that we can no longer automatically build the cool speed me up tool we used to build automatically. Here are directions on how to build it manually if you want your iOS test to run at faster speed. I'm not sure if an XUI test if we need this, but if you're using the older framework on iOS 9, you'll definitely need to do this speed up here. So it's pretty simple. It's like two or three lines of code to run it. Um, check that out. I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions and other things. Uh, cool capabilities I'll run through at lightning pace. Auto web view starts in a web view context, particularly useful for Cordova apps or PhoneGap apps, if a little older school. Uh, ignore unimportant views will make your Android DOM a lot faster by collapsing all those. If you ever looked at the Android DOM and seen it goes this deep, you'll get rid of all those sort of grouping views in between. Uh, native web screenshot may fix some screenshot problems people see. Uh, iOS, pre-authorize your location services with that one. You can automatically accept or dismiss alerts so you don't have to worry about checking for those in your automation. Uh, native web tap uses non-JavaScript taps on web content, which is cool. Um, Safari, ignore fraud warning. If you don't have properly signed SSL on your test servers, that can be quite useful. Enter key delay if you're having problems with the, key, the keyboard typing too fast. And there are several send key strategies available too. Also, on Android, we support networking conditioning. This is a matrix that shows you sort of all the different values you might support. Um, so you can set it anyway on Android. This does not work on iOS. And I have left five minutes for questions. So. I have a little closing thing, too. Okay. I'm going to test everything again. So after that quick whirlwind tour of the cool stuff in advanced Appium, does anyone have any questions? Anything about Appium in general? Yes. I don't know if we'll get him the microphone. Uh, I guess you have already maybe heard this question a couple of times. It's like uh, for the latest APM version, 1.6, uh, is there any possibility to run uh, several iOS execution at the same time in parallel? iOS simulators or iOS? Uh, don't matter, devices or simulator. I'm going to take my best shot. Jonathan, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, You'll need multiple Macs to run multiple simulators. To run multiple devices, you'll just need to supply the UDID parameter. There were some versions of Appium in the middle where Apple broke their support for multiple physical devices at the same time, but they fixed it a year or two ago. And so if you have a phone and a SIM, or two phones and a SIM, you can do that sort of thing, but only one SIM per machine. Okay. So and it's like you still can connect only one device to one Mac. And then no, you can do multiple devices to one Mac, but only a single simulator at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
It was fixed by Apple about a year ago, I believe, a year or two ago. Jonathan has a question. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, is it from the web? Can I ask? OK, you're next. I'm, I'm worried about that. I want to ask about the, the version releases. Why you release the version after, um, uh, around two weeks after iOS release a version? Not, what? Not, 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 why not start on your Appium version when iOS starts, uh, when Apple released the first beta? Uh, Jonathan would yeah, probably be better I'll, qualified uh, for that. I'll take that one. <laughs> Um, the reason that we were a little bit late of the uh, iOS 10 release is because between iOS 9.3 and iOS 10, there is a complete gutting of the automation technology that Apple used, which required us to essentially throw away 80% uh, of our previous iOS code. And then we um, you know, uh, made use of some of the stuff that Facebook had done with WebDriver Agent and an XUI test, but basically meant starting from scratch. So that's not a typical release, uh, thankfully. It's the first time they've completely thrown away their automation technology. Um, so that's, we're not typically late of the uh, official iOS release, and we do start ensuring Appium compatibility whenever the first betas are out, or whenever we hear that they're out. So hopefully that won't happen again. Um, but the, the advantage, of course, as an Appium user is that you didn't have to rewrite your entire test suite. You just had to wait two weeks, um, which <laughs> if your entire test suite can be rewritten in less than two weeks, then, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, and then back to the other question about multiple simulators. I believe that is now possible. Um, I haven't gone through and actually made it work. Um, but again, with, uh, with the stuff that Lawrence has been doing at Facebook, um, maybe you want to talk about how that's possible, or all right, let's get let's get Lawrence and Mike. Before we get Lawrence, Mike, any other questions? We have about, uh, there's one more back there, and then we'll go to Lawrence, and then I'll close it. Hello, uh, can we have multiple uh, APM versions into a same Mac Mini? Uh, yes, it's a Node package, so you can install yeah. multiple versions of the Node package, uh, and then run them as such. And it'd be a little tricky to set up, but it's possible. Yeah, does Lawrence or Lomax? Hey. hey, I'm Lawrence. So um, I work on the FB Simulator Control Project, which is sort of, uh, you can see it's a companion to WebDriver Agent. Um, it is indeed possible to run uh, multiple simulators in parallel with multiple WebDriver Agents booted. Um, I'm, I can't really speak to uh, the Appium implementation here, but um, it's certainly possible. And if anybody wants help with that, uh, feel free to reach out. All right, I stand corrected. I knew it used to not work, and I wasn't sure. I knew in WebDriver Agent it's definitely fixed, but I didn't know about iOS 10. So anyways, it sounds like Lawrence thinks it works because he made it work, but it may not work in Appium, we're not sure. But it can work in Appium because they're open source and we're open source, and that all works. Good. Anyway, so assuming there's not like one more little question someone wants to ask, I will just close it out. You have another one? Oh, I thought I was done at two. <laughs> Gonna make me stand for 13 minutes of questions. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just close it really long. Um, all right, anyway, so I always like to end my talks now with sort of a pseudo-inspirational message. So I'm gonna do that again and you guys can laugh at me. But I don't make any money doing this. I don't do this because I have a side consulting business. I just do this because I enjoy participating in open source. Like Simon said, there's a joy in it. Um, I don't really make money off this, like occasionally I may do a training or something for somebody, but that's about the extent of it. It's not enough to, you know, buy me that plane I've always wanted, or that yacht. But anyway, um, so like we mentioned, four and a half years ago, I was down here, like one of you, just in, well I was a speaker, but I was also an attendee, and I did a lightning talk, so I want to plug the lightning talks, which I will moderate, and they're tomorrow afternoon. So please sign up if you've got a cool idea. And so I think my learnings from all of this experience can be summarized by Steve Jobs, a man I don't particularly admire, but who has a good applicable quote here, and thus I will use it. Uh, he once said, quote, life can be much broader once you realize one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you, and you can change it, you can influence it, 
You can build your own things that other people can use. Uh, once you learn that, you will never be the same again. Uh, and I think that is the quote that summarizes my experience with Appium. I had a problem where my boss was yelling at me because our mobile app kept breaking. I thought, let's add some automation. Perhaps we can test it, and then it will break less. Uh, I looked at everything that was out there, and I didn't think any of it was worth using. So I made my own thing. Um, and it turns out a lot of other people thought it was quite useful. And thanks to people at Sauce Labs and a lot of other people contributed, now it's sort of the predominant de facto solution to the problem. So I would encourage all of you to have the same appropriate amount of skepticism at this conference. So don't assume anybody here knows what they're talking about, including myself. Uh, if one of you has the Appium killer out there, please kill it. My children don't rely on this money to eat. I will not, no one will go hungry, nothing bad will happen, but we will all benefit if someone comes up with an awesome tool for everyone to use. So go to this conference, enjoy the talks, but no, just because we're experts up here speaking, we may not have the best possible answer. Um, and I think I was in that situation four and a half years ago where I looked, what is Google doing? What's Facebook doing? Um, no, I think this is better. So please, and if you come up with something, do a lightning talk at a conference, do a regular talk at a conference, post it on GitHub, share it with people. Your idea, like most of mine, is probably utter complete garbage, but there's like a one and a half, like tenth of a whatever percent that it might be useful to someone, and you should share it with people. And so I lucked out, and one of the first ones I shared with people was actually quite useful and cool. Many of the subsequent ones, not so much. So. Your, your mileage may vary, um, but nonetheless, please share your ideas with people and be critical of everything you see because the tool that automates mobile apps right now is not written by someone over at SpaceX that lands rockets on barges or whatever the hell they do that's really complicated and cool. I worked at a dating site and I currently work at a food company. Um, so I'm no smarter than any of you. You are likely smarter than me. You can do this too, so please share your ideas with people so that happens, and we can keep coming back to Selenium Conference and seeing new cool stuff. And so with that, what I mean is just test everything, including the talks. And that's all.